Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. For today's episode, I am going to share with you a lot of information about the Exchange Visitor Program or what they call the J-1 Visa Program. So this is the uh, agreement between the Philippines and the United States or the United States and other countries. But for today, I'm going to focus about the J-1 visa program in the Philippines. Are you ready? So let's begin. So first of all, there is a good news. If you remember a year ago, sometime in March of 2020, they stopped um, the processing of J-1 visa or the EVP program just because of uh, the height and of our COVID-19 pandemic. But now there is a good news. On April 6, 2021, they lifted that moratorium. So it means uh, they resumed the operation already in processing the exchange visitor program for teachers. That is under the resolution of 01-2021. So isn't it a good news for everyone? So that is the first information. So that is the resolution number 01 2021. So if you would like to look it up for the details. So it's hooray for everyone. Okay. So what is the policy actions or the content of the resolution number 01 2021? First, the purpose of the resolution is to intensify and intensify the public information campaign that exchange visitor program is a cultural and educational program. They wanted to emphasize that, that when a teacher goes abroad in the United States, the purpose is cultural and educational. It's not all about changing the visa or immigration to the United States. So that is the main purpose of the resolution. They wanted teachers that are going abroad on a J-1 visa to understand that their program is based on cultural and educational, okay? And then the second is, they also wanted to expedite legal assistance to exchange visitor program participants. What does that mean? Like if uh, teachers who go abroad in the US, they encounter problem, they are not treated fairly and there are some issues. So the Philippine government will act on that. They will support them and assist them to um, get the fair treatment. And another reason is to adopt more stringent measure in the attendance to the pre-departure orientation seminar. So they wanted 100% attendance of all the J-1 visa teachers before they depart to the United States to attend the pre-departure orientation seminar. This is very important because it gives you a lot of reminders, information on uh, what you expect in the United States. So I am advising the teachers under the EVP program to attend the pre-departure orientation seminar, okay? And I will explain to you how you can do that. And explore the possibility of the government-to-government -government arrangement with the U.S. So what does that mean? They would like to avoid in the future the teachers um, going to a third party. Instead, there will be an arrangement between the Philippine government and the U.S. government. So later, maybe the, the Philippine government is the one who is going to process the J-1 visa and no more third party sponsors or agencies. And the next one is institute registration and monitoring system for participants in coordination with the Philippine Foreign Service Post in the United States. So they wanted to monitor and track all the J-1 visa teachers that goes to the United States. Um, the purpose of this is to find out their whereabouts, where are they, what are they doing, are they enjoying the program, are they learning, uh, did, uh, were they given the proper uh, you know, treatment and salary and all that. And this is also for the benefit of the teachers and making sure that they are 
in good situation when they go to the United States. It's, a, it's more on protection to the teachers. And issue amended guidelines on the issuance of no objection statement. So um, there are guidelines in applying for NOS. They did not remove it. It's still open to everyone. And I will explain that in my next episode into the detail. But for now, my focus on information on the J-1 visa or the EVP program, okay? And continue the efforts of crafting and adopting the guidelines for accreditation of local representatives. So if you remember, there are so many agencies or third party recruiters uh, that are recruiting a J-1 visa teacher. What the government wants to do is they would like to accredit local agencies. So you apply locally, not agencies in the United States. They, they would like to establish that. So watch out for those changes in the future, okay? So um, how do you register as a J-1 visa holder? Because remember, the, the government wants everybody to register, okay? So effective May 25, through the CFO as EBP Secretariat, registration and pre-departure orientation seminar will resume. So they resume it already. There is a pre-departure orientation seminar, or they call it PDO. So you need to register. And um, the details, um, the documents that you need to, to present are the following. So if you would register to their um, the uh, data or uh, system as a J-1 teacher, you have to have a sponsor, okay? And a local representative will ensure the safety and welfare of the participants. That sponsor will give you an agreement saying, um, signed by the employer that they will abide by the regulation, they will provide the benefits, uh, appropriate salary, insurance, and all of that. And also, before you register to CFO for your pre-departure orientation, you should already have a proof that you are insured. So if you are going abroad in a J-1 visa, make sure you get that copy of health insurance to your employer, because that is needed as an evidence um, in that insurance, it will include COVID-19 and medical evacuation to the Philippines or repatriation in, in case something bad happened, but hopefully we will not go that far, okay? So there must be a proper insurance coverage. You need to present that when you register for pre-departure orientation, okay? And then you should have a notarized affidavit from participants stating his or her clear understanding of the EVP program and its purpose. So it's not just um, signing your contract. You need to have also the affidavit notarized and submit it to the exchange visitor program office that you understand the purpose of the program. And the purpose of the program, as I mentioned, is cultural and educational, okay? And I'll show you later the example of the affidavit. And participants under the alien physician and research scholar categories will be required to submit a reintegration plan, including research and work program for the duration of their training, okay? And meanwhile, the participants under the teacher category, specifically those who are teaching in public schools, must submit a clearance issued by the Department of Education. Remember that if you are a deaf ed teacher, you have to get a clearance from the deaf ed that they are allowing you or you ask permission from them that you will join the G1, okay? So don't forget those, otherwise they will not register you. So what is a PDOS? Okay, so these are the basic requirements and they have uh, what they call a program or site where you can register for PDOS or pre-departure orientation seminar and they call it the J-1, of course. So what are the basic requirements for this? You need to bring your copy of your passport where it shows your bio uh, 
page or information, a copy of your J-1 visa. So there must be a stamp already in your passport that you pass the interview and you have the visa and copy of your certificate of eligibility for exchange visitors, which is your BF 2019. So you need to bring those. And undertaking uh, from program sponsor, those are the documents signed by your employers that they agree to provide all the necessary needs or uh, conditions that you will need when you go to the US. And then your insurance, health insurance, your notarized affidavit, and there is a fee of 400 pesos for the registration for your pre-departure orientation. So those are the requirements, okay? So, um, and, and that is where you need to go to register for um, your account in order for you to be in the PDOS because the pre-departure orientation is done online, not uh, physically, okay? So remember that website or link. And what are the steps to register? So first you create an account to that uh, link. Then after you created an account, then you submit the documents, okay? And then after that verification of your documents, you will receive unique link through the email to access the online registration, like the of course type. So once you created an account, you, uh, there will be an email sent to you and then they will send you the link. And then fill up the CFO online registration form. It tells you the instructions. And then you need to pay the 400 through via uh, center or Gcash. So they have those instructions and you will receive an email with tracking number. And then they'll give you the schedule when you can take the online pre-departure orientation seminar. So follow those steps, okay, teachers? Don't forget. So you need to be uh, well informed in what you are doing or process in order to be successful and avoid hassle in the future. And this is the sample of the affidavit. I just fill up the information and then you have to notarize it. And this is required for your registration to the CFO. And it's found in their website as well. I'm just showing you how it looks like. And reminders. It says here that registration speaker are not being sent by a courier. Okay, so, and also the, the number one um, requirements here or something that you need to be reminded is to avoid inconvenience on your part to not go to the CFO office physically unless you are advised to do so. Everything is done online, email, or virtual communication, okay? So you need to remember that. That is a very good reminder, especially if you are living in a far area outside Metro Manila, it is a hassle for you to travel just to find out that they do not entertain a physical visitor. So communication is all email virtually and online. So watch for my next episode. I am going to explain to you in details how the no objection statement application is, okay? So after you learn all about J-1 uh, exchange visitor program and some of you, and they reiterate that the purpose of the program is cultural and educational. And yet they are also open to issue a no objection statement but uh, it depends on their decision. And that is the next series or uh, presentation that I'm going to give you, okay? How to do the NOS application. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned a lot about J1 and please be guided accordingly and good luck to all those uh, who already receive a job offer, okay? So take care. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and share because I want you to be well informed and share it to other people as well. So bye for now and thank you for watching and to God be the glory. So remember, subscribe to the Teacher's Best Friend channel. Bye.